So we're at Willow Springs Raceway up in the high desert. Yesterday I was coaching with Alex. I've got button willow settings in the bike currently. It's his first visit to this track in quite a while, so we went pretty slow to gradually build up pace going from a 145 to a 138, which is still here. It's moving, but it's not quick. What's quick? So fast, quick. fast here would be for an A group rider, 132 and below. So if you're below 30s, you're moving, and I mean moving. The fast guys with super bikes are doing 21s which that's another world. Aliens, as they say in MotoGP. So with Button Willow settings, I completely smashed the Fort Travel flat. And Button Willow is a very heavy braking track. So why did that smash flat here? Well, a lot of it is because of camber. Some of the corners are literally like this at 100 miles an hour. So the bike gets absolutely smashed flat, compressed into the corner. turn three, the cliffs going into them. And because of that, you use more travel in the corner than you can generate on the brakes. So, as we continue to ride today, especially with Alex this afternoon, we're gonna go faster. We have to do something about making sure in the corner, not on the brakes, that bottom out is avoided so we don't low side. Now, given the fact that we bottomed out here on G out with Alex yesterday running a 45 down to a one minute 38 and going faster generally, the forks are bottomed out, so what are my options? to change suspension and get it off the bottom and decrease risk of crashing, we have choices. We can add preload and or we can add compression damping. So what we've got to figure out is where are we now and how much do we have left? If we go too tight and too stiff, that's going to introduce chatter or harshness into the fork. So we generally want to balance out spring preload and compression adjustments together so they help each other, not one dominate the other. So let's start with compression damping and see where we're at. So compression currently is half, one, will one turn out from closed. So let's make a subtle adjustment of a quarter turn in and go back to three quarters. Where are we on preload? Well, let's see what we got left. One, two, three, four. That's it, I got four turns left. So let's take three back. One, two, three and then this should be four on this one one two three four let's go back three one two three so we're going to make a very slight adjustment in compression and preload to see what that gives us because our first series with alex is not going to be straight at 38s it's probably going to be a 42 41 somewhere around there Given that that's the case, and we run those laps and come back in, if I'm riding consistently, did I bottom out again? If I bottomed out again, I'm gonna need another quarter turn of compression and another turn of preload. 
Now, <clears throat> the important part is, rule of thumb, if you're in the last 30% of your adjustment towards maximum, what you have is inadequate for your ability and or the pace you're running on track. If Alex was to get to a 34, I would crash trying to keep up with him because the front can't sustain that level of duress with the G-loads in this track. So there's only a certain pace I'll be able to reach in safety here. And if I have to go too far with this, I'm done. So now I'm carrying a significantly increased risk every lap I'm going on this track because I'm close to maximum on compression and preload. To schedule a remote tuning appointment for you and your bike with Dave via text, email, Facebook, etc., contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.